Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be sharing Lesson 2 uh, for December the 11th, 2022. We're still in Unit 1 entitled God Prepares the Way. And our topic for today taken from our adult quarterly is Zechariah is Redeemed. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Malachi chapter 4 uh, verses 1 through 6. Our background scripture is taken from the Gospel according to Luke uh, chapter 1 verses 57 through 80. And our print passage today where uh, our study will take place uh, comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 1 uh, verse 57 through 66 and also verses 76 through 79. Our key verse reads, You, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him. That's taken from Luke uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 76 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to rejoice in God's promises being fulfilled. Secondly, to relate to the impact of the birth of a child. And then thirdly, to reflect on the prophecy regarding the ministry of John. In this case, we're talking about uh, John the Baptist. We have three outlines that will be a part of our lesson. Uh, the first outline is entitled, Bring the Gift. Second outline is entitled, Bring the Praise. And then our third outline is entitled, Bring the Light. And so we, we thank and praise God for yet another opportunity to uh, share God's Word with you through our Sunday School lesson. We certainly thank and praise God for this season, this Advent season that we have embarked upon. And uh, We certainly are thankful for all of you that are joining us today to be a part of our lesson. Uh, we encourage you to get your uh, Bible and be prepared to take a few notes that we want to share with you today and uh, just move forward in the Word of God as we uh, historically, traditionally, uh, at this time of the year, we start looking at uh, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, we get a chance to do that through the Gospel of Luke today. So. Uh, let's prepare our hearts and minds uh, as we go forward in this lesson. I want to read the biblical context uh, for this lesson and then we'll get right into our outlines. But in the ancient context of this story, the birth of a son was considered particularly fortunate. A male child was considered a blessing from the Lord as he would carry on the bloodline and family name. Adding uh, this blessing to that of Elizabeth's successful childbirth and an advanced age gives clarity to the reason for the family and community celebration of the birth of Zachariah's infant son. So the song of Zachariah known as the Benedictus um, stands parallel to the song of Mary uh, the Magnificat that's in Luke chapter 1 verses 46 through 55 both prophetically proclaim the future works of a parent's unborn child. Uh, Zechariah's son uh, song uh, prophesies uh, John's role as the forerunner of Jesus and we will look at that today in Luke chapter 1 uh, verses 67 through 79 uh, he had come to prepare the way for the one who would bring light into the darkness. So according to the angel, the angel Gabriel, uh, Zachariah's spiritual muteness or his unwillingness to speak a word of faith in God's promise directly resulted in physical uh, muteness, his inability to say anything. So it was a swift yet temporary punishment from God for unbelief a punishment that was only lifted when Zechariah was ready to confirm after the fact exactly what God had told him in advance. So we want to pay particular attention to the word fulfilled 
uh, as it relates to this lesson and certainly uh, to the gospel according to Luke uh, but we are talking about this word fulfill it is a verb uh, that is uh, used in three sentence senses uh, that merit uh, our special attention so it's an ethical sense of observing or meeting requirements additionally it's a prophetic sense of uh, corresponding to what was promised um, and then uh, predicted or foreshadowed a, a temporal sense uh, related to the arrival times ordained by God so that's very important in scripture uh, God has made certainly through the Old Testament through the prophets um, uh, God had made significant promises of what he would do in the future uh, foreshadowing the the Messiah that would come uh, through these prophets and so as we look at this lesson today we have to think about the fact that at some point when God says something uh, in our lives in history there will be a, a fulfillment of those things and it's important for us not to uh, just have faith in those promises but to keep the faith um, in God's promises uh, in the face of, of adversity if you will and certainly in this case of Zachariah and Elizabeth um, being aged individuals uh, certainly beyond uh, uh, our comprehension in terms of childbearing but yet uh, God has shared some things to them uh, and, and God has taken into account all of the human factors and, and so it's, it's important for us to understand that uh, God is certainly capable of working beyond uh, our, our limits right he's certainly able to work beyond what we are able to comprehend and that is the case uh, in this lesson today and so we want to get into this first outline uh, talking about bring the gift and this is taken from the gospel according to Luke chapter 1 verses 57 through 60 and I want to read this from the NIV translation so when it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby she gave birth to a son uh, her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy uh, and they shared her joy so on the eighth day uh, they came to circumcise the child and they were going to name him after his father Zachariah but his mother spoke up and said no he is to be called John and so we want to be able to go back a little bit uh, certainly I would hope that you would read all of this uh, lengthy chapter first chapter of the gospel according to Luke but we want to remember uh, a couple of things that and I want to take you back uh, particularly to the book of Malachi uh, very quickly you want to go there um, uh, perhaps we uh, don't frequent this book enough um, but it, it, it gives us some insight certainly to where we are going in scripture today and, and, uh, and certainly the study of our lesson but in the fourth chapter of the book of Malachi and I want to look at uh, verses 5 and 6 and the Bible says uh, behold I will send you Elijah the prophet uh, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers lest I come and strike the earth with a curse so what's happening here uh, this was the prophecy uh, that 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 God had laid out that he was going to uh, uh, bring a prophet if you will he was going to bring someone uh, so where do we see this in the gospel according to Luke well we find this in Luke chapter 1 and I want to look at verse 13 I just want to 
lay the foundation uh, uh, as we think about uh, some of the things that transpired in uh, Zachariah's life. Uh, uh, someone of his character and posture, uh, he should have known these things in Scripture, right? Uh, so if we look at Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 13, this is not a part of our text, but it's something that we need to look at. Uh, the Bible says at verse 13, But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. You shall call his name John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Verse 15, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Watch this in verse 16. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. Verse 17. Watch this. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So we see uh, uh, the same tone uh, almost verbatim if you will from the book of Malachi to the book of Luke where a prophecy has been uh, established in the book of Malachi but it has been fulfilled in Luke's gospel and so this is uh, uh, something that the Lord is bringing to Zechariah to help him understand that that he is uh, uh, God is fulfilling Scripture in his life and in the life of Elizabeth, and that's huge because when when God establishes a matter, we don't know sometimes how God is going to fulfill. A particular matter in our lives but nevertheless he has said that he would and so now as we get into this this first outline the time when the time uh, 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 was come for Elizabeth to have this this fulfillment this child uh, uh, established in her life now the question is what is his name going to be? You have to read all of this first chapter and you can see uh, as we think about the fact that uh, Zechariah has already uh, 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 been uh, reprimanded, if you will, by the angel Gabriel. Uh, uh, Zechariah has uh, under undergone this uh, being mute not being able to speak because he did not believe right if we if, if we look at uh, verse 18 of the first chapter not a part of our text but we need to understand this verse 18 then Zachariah said to the angel how shall I know this for I am an old man and my wife is well advanced in years but at verse 19, and the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. Verse 20, but behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you, did, you do not or did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their own time. So if you think about Zacharias here, he's been mute for the entire pregnancy of Elizabeth. Can you imagine that? Not being able to speak just because you question the fulfillment uh, 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 or the truth of God's word. And so when we think about it, you might say, well, this is harsh for God to do. Well, if you think about the fact that we have been told uh, 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 various things that God will do and, and has promised to do, and it's incumbent upon us to believe those things, right? But, but, 
But here, as we are in our lesson uh, text or first outline, so God's promise to Zechariah was for, was fulfilled precisely as he said, right? So God's promises, they never fail. Elizabeth's neighbors and extended family gather to rejoice and celebrate how the Lord has shown great mercy to Elizabeth. So infertile women were made to feel guilty, inadequate, and even forsaken by God. So to be delivered from the shame and reproach of barrenness was good news for every woman. So on the eighth day, Elizabeth and Zachariah prepared to dedicate, circumcise, and publicly name their child according to Jewish custom. So they had to, they had to come uh, to give back to the Lord the gift that he had given to them. You know, we do that when children are born. We take them to the house of the Lord and we offer them back to God as, as you know, in, 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 in honor of, and, and, and out of respect and gratitude for the gift that he has given to us. And so we offer uh, uh, our uh, seed, our fruit back to God uh, to be used as, as at his discretion, if you will. Right. And so this is the kind of uh, symbolism that we see in our culture even today. So most uh, people in that day expected that the child, rightly so, would be named after his, his dad, Zachariah, so especially considered the great grace uh, uh, that God had bestowed upon the family in granting a child at such a, a late age. So the couple was prepared to name the child John, meaning God is gracious as commanded by God through the angel Gabriel. So correcting those who assumed the child's name would be Zachariah, Elizabeth announced the name that is going to be John. So uh, following the purposes of God at every juncture in our lives, even to the name, everything means something to God. And this is something that certainly Zacharias had to learn. Elizabeth has to learn. And what I like about this, uh, God is teaching community. God is teaching the, uh, the entire community, the onlookers, if you will, the well-wishers uh, 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 about the significance of, of doing things the way the Lord has said to do them. And so when we bring children into the world, we need to, uh, and I want to give you First Samuel chapters 1 and 2. You all remember Hannah did the same thing. She was not able to uh, 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 bear children. She was mocked and ridiculed for her position in society of not being able to have children, but God blessed her uh, to have one of the greatest uh, uh, children in Israel's history. And Samuel grew up under the priest Eli and learned the principles of God, learned the voice of God, and certainly he went on to be a great leader in Israel's history. So this should teach us a lot about the significance of our children, uh, that we do our due diligence as parent and, and, and bring them back to God to raise them in the fear and admonition of the Lord because they have purpose, they have promise. And if God has blessed us with children, uh, uh, then it makes good sense for us to offer our children back to God and allow God to use them certainly through the way we are being used by the Lord and certainly how we are training and raising our children to fear the Lord, to reverence him, to honor him, uh, uh, to treat him as God and to live for him, to live holy. And, and so this is what uh, I, I was reading this, uh, uh, just going back here. Uh, 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 and, and so the purpose of John's life, if we look here and go back to Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 17, uh, the angel is giving details about this child's life, John the Baptist, and what he would be capable of doing. It, the, the Bible says, again, he will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, and he's going to have the capability to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, right? Why is that important? 
Why is it important that this, this prophet have such power working that he is able to, uh, through his messaging and, and, and through uh, his admonition, is to turn uh, uh, the father's heart to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord so that we have a responsibility. And so John's plate, if you will, his, his spiritual uh, plate as, as a prophet uh, 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 is, is full in terms of his task and what God is bringing him into the world to be able to do. So he's got to turn hearts, right? He's got to persuade people through his messaging to surrender themselves to the Lord and to their families, right? To the responsibility of raising and rearing children and uh, and and the disobedient, right? We have a lot of these things functioning in our culture today. We are disobedient, right? We need to to honor and and return to our family structure and do the things that are pleasing in God's sight to make ready a people from the inside out. If the heart is made right, if the heart has been persuaded, if the heart has been made ready for the Lord, then the conduct will be that which is pleasing to the Lord. I hope this makes sense for you today. I also want you to read Romans chapter 12, uh, uh, verses 1 and 2. You all have seen that many, many times. So we, the question was asked, uh, what do you think is the spiritual significance of of dedicating a child to God and so we've sort of unpacked that for you biblically and practically to help you understand when you look at your children you're looking at a gift from the Lord and it's our job to help our children unpack unpack their course of life as unto God we need to help them and encourage them to be able to do that right so secondly our outline is entitled bring the praise this is taken from Luke chapter 1 uh, verses uh, 61 uh, through 65 and again from the NIV translation so this conversation goes on this narrative continues they said to her there is no one among your relatives who has that name then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child Verse 63, he asks for a writing tablet. Still remember, you know, he cannot talk at this time. Zacharias is unable to speak because of unbelief. And, and Gabriel told him he would not be able to speak until this thing had been accomplished. So, and to everyone's astonishment, uh, uh, he wrote his name is John. 64, immediately right immediately verse 64 says his mouth was open and his tongue set free and he began to speak praising God verse 65 all the neighbors were filled with all and throughout the hill country of Judea people were talking about all these things so unbelief turned now to belief uh, uh, Zacharias has accepted now through his reprimand through the punishment if you will not being able to speak he has learned to believe on the name of the Lord and so he identifies uh, uh, that this child should be named John not Zacharias Jr. right and so immediately God responded as he always will to our acts of faith right he always will respond to our adherence to his promises, to the things that he has said uh, that he would do uh, uh, in our lives, and so I, you know, I want to, I want us to really think about this thing here because this is where we are as Christians uh, even today. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about faith. There's a lot of discussions about having faith, and it's and, and rightly so. It is a relevant conversation, but it is a fight to keep that faith. Right, it is a fight, a literal war, uh, uh, to believe because circumstances come up in our lives, and they they present challenges for us. And sometimes we assume, or uh, as the introduction was 
laying out in this lesson here, sometimes we forget about the things that God has said he would do in our lives. And so as soon as Zacharias identified with the things that has been told to him, then the Lord redeemed him, set him free, delivered him, opened his mouth. And, and, and we could go on in this narrative, but Zechariah begins to prophesy after the Lord delivers him. And he identifies with things that are said in the Old Testament through the prophets that the Lord would rescue Israel from their enemies. God was coming to save them, not just from physical enemies, but God was coming to save through Jesus Christ for our sins because we have those rebellious attitudes toward God uh, that present stumbling blocks for us to believe on the name of the Lord and we suffer the consequences, right? Zacharias suffered for the entire pregnancy of his wife. Think about the months that he wanted to say something, but he could not. And many times when we don't believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't believe on the promises of God. We don't believe in the word of God. And we duly suffer uh, 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 for these consequences. Or these are the result uh, of our actions. Right. And so many times we are unable to get from under that cloud uh, of unbelief. Until we start believing on the things that the Lord has said that he will do. We have to believe. Right. Uh, the gospel comes to us specifically and particularly for us to believe in it. Right. We must believe the gospel. I cannot overstate that enough because I can imagine what this, you know, and just his his wife and the community. We don't get enough uh, uh, details here. But after Zacharias came out of the temple uh, uh, burning incense uh, uh, as was customary, uh, for his order to do, uh, he was unable to speak for all of these months, right? He was unable to go forward. And as long as we are, 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 are uh, positioned in unbelief, we cannot go forward, right? So when Elizabeth uh, announced John's name, those present began to question her response and motion to Zachariah as if he were deaf for clarification, meaning a confirmation or denial. So knowing he could not speak, Zechariah motioned for a writing tablet and plainly wrote his name as John. Zechariah's selection of the name God had given signaled, watch this, Zechariah's surrender to God's will and restored belief. You know, there is a brokenness that comes with uh, with sin, with unbelief. There's a brokenness that comes down on the inside. And God wants to respond to our brokenness. But we have to believe on him, right? And so, Zacharias brought this condition on himself. This is not why Gabriel came to him. He didn't come to cause this condition is specific he specifically said to Zacharias I came to bring you these glad tidings right I didn't come to bring you any uh, drama if you will but since you won't believe on me then there's a consequence right Hebrews chapter 11 we've been saying that for years he who comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder unto them that diligently seek him. And so it doesn't matter who we are, who we think we are. We must all believe in our hearts. The same way we got saved. We had to believe in our heart. Right? And so this, this is what triggered salvation. And when we confess with our mouths and believed in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead salvation was the result of that act of faith and so now Zachariah needs to be delivered all of these months of not being able to talk he finally surrenders to what God says he wants to do in his life and with the child that he is loaning to them he is loaning John the Baptist to them right so when his reprimand had ended Zachariah was, uh, I, this is interesting. Zechariah 
uh, was not bitter or angry, but he did have something to say. Immediately, Zechariah was able to speak. Note that his first words were neither excuses nor explanations, but praises to God. Those uh, present were awed and amazed at the miracle they had just witnessed. Not surprisingly, the unusual uh, series of events became the talk, right? The talk of the town. So God brought this about. God brought this about. Uh, God is just restoring. If you look at the way God is working with all of these different individuals through this act of bringing this child into the world, certainly through the deliverance of Zachariah. So what do you think was the greatest lesson Zachariah learned from his dramatic encounter with God? So I just, again, the, it's an act of faith. And I want to give you First uh, Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse 12. And then also 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 7. Paul was talking about he had fought. He had fought a good fight, right? He kept the faith. That's important. He was faithful to God through his life. Paul was, right? And he was faithful unto death. He knew that it was a crown of life waiting for him because he had fought this thing and he had kept this thing. He had stayed true to God through all of the adversity in his life. He stayed faithful to the very end. So lastly, this uh, last outline, bring the light. This is taken from Luke chapter 1 verse 66 and then it goes down to verse uh, 76 through 79 again from the NIV translation. Everyone who heard this uh, wondered about it asking what then is this child going to be right for the Lord's hand was with him let me ask you a question and this is a rhetorical question as we think about our children our, our lineage our heritage uh, what are the, what are our children going to be right what is the what is the outlook what is our goal for our children right so we know that God has pronounced uh, before John came into the world that his hand was going to be uh, upon him, uh, that he had a work to do. He had a, a huge task to perform. He's setting the way or preparing the way for the Savior Jesus to come. So the parents now have to support this child's path right that the Lord has designated and we do that for our children we try to support them try to support their endeavors right but it's important for us to ask God about our children what he would have for them and help them to understand these things and encourage these particular matters in their lives so they can be the people that not just what we want them to be but that they can be the children that God wants them to be, right? That's very important. So uh, we go down to uh, verse 76, still in Luke chapter 1. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. You will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins right verse 78 because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven verse 79 to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace I want to give you Psalm 32 but what a huge task for a child. What great work that the Lord has set before this, this baby, John the Baptist, that he would be able to come into this world and be called a prophet, right? Right out of the gate, this is who he is, right? And he's going to have the capacity, knowledge of, he's, he has a gift of salvation he has this 
knowledge that God has given him through the forgiveness of sin. So in other words, he's going to be able to explain salvation, what God is offering. He has a message, right, as prophets do, right? He has information. And what I love about this, look at verse 77 again, to give his people, right, the impact that this child is going to have is going to be much bigger than his immediate family. It's going to be broad. It's going to be deep. It's going to be it's going to be huge. It's going to have some height to it, right? So he's going to be pushing. He has a message for people. So where are these people that John has to say this to? Wherever God designates him to go. Right? God is setting this thing up. This is why we give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Because he is involved from the start to the finish. He's granted these elderly people to have a child that they thought they couldn't. They're aged, right? Beyond childbearing years, both of them. God gives them the grace to bring this child into the world. God tells them why he is giving them this child, what his name is going to be, what he is going to do, what he is not going to do, and what he is going to bring about in terms of preparing the way for the Savior, right? So the people will be prepared for Christ because the prophet is giving them information. He's a setup man, if you will. He is telling them what the requirements are unto salvation. So making the people ready or conducive to the will of God and to the Savior. When he comes, then you won't reject him. Right? But you would accept the message that the a prophet has set up. And so when the fulfillment of that prophecy is realized, that is manifested, then we start to accept Right? We don't deny the Savior, but we accept the Savior and we accept the terms that God is offering forgiveness through His Son for all of our sins. What we did in the past, what we might do in the present, what we might do in the future. God is forgiving the whole thing, offering forgiveness of sins. Right? God is saying, I'm forgiving you. And this is the atonement that I'm sending my Savior, Jesus, to come. He is the t atonement for your sinful way. And if you accept him, right, then you will be forgiven of all of your transgressions. Right? Isn't that huge? If you read Psalm 32, it starts out by saying, blessed is the man, right? We are blessed when the Lord uh, uh, doesn't find iniquity in our hearts. We are blessed. Why? Because we are, God is looking at us through his son. Without the son, then God is looking at you at, for you, right? So if we don't accept the Savior, then we will pay a dear price, right, for our sins. Though although the price had already been paid, but through unbelief we rejected the knowledge of God. Right? You should read Romans chapter one when you have time. But many were eager to find an explanation for the unusual circumstances of John's birth. That happens all the time people want to try to understand what God is doing in a particular person's life and it may be for you to understand that and then it may not be but they are wondering these elderly people have brought a child into the world and his name won't be after his dad his name will be something that relates to our heavenly father which is that God is gracious right this is where the focus should be so, but uh, 
the Lord's hand was going to be on this child, as we said earlier. So, but God, uh, he gives a summary of the ministry to which God had already called his infant son, right? God is setting the tone for Zechariah to understand. So specifically, the baby would eventually serve as a prophet to prepare the way for the Lord and to teach about salvation through the forgiveness of their sin, right? So John's role would be essential because religious nationalists had twisted the idea of the Messiah as uh, uh, as a spiritual redeemer and replaced it with the ideas of a political deliverer. See, God is not coming for that, right? Part of John's mission was to clarify that being lost did not mean being subject to Roman rule but to be condemned by God that's what it means to be lost and we are condemned right John chapter 3 because we don't want to come into the light we don't want our deeds reproved we don't want to accept the Savior and so the condemnation is not something that God brings on you it's something you bring on yourself because of unbelief Jesus died publicly and the reason why he died publicly so everybody would have access everybody would be able to see everybody would have be able to accept or reject but if he died publicly you can't say you didn't see it right the question is did you believe it right or not that's the question. So we want to be able to understand that salvation comes to the people by God's tender mercy. The people's only requirement is to confess right, and repent. God does the work shining the light of the knowledge of God to lead his people to everlasting peace with him. Lastly, I would like to give you Romans chapter 5. You should read all of that. And many times we don't have the peace of God because we have not made peace with God through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this lesson today. We thank you for opening up our eyes even in this Advent season to see the, the purpose and the reason for Jesus coming into this world. We see the purpose for John being able to prepare the way to preach a message of repentance, to preach a message, O oh God, unto salvation, to help us to appreciate the fact that you have already forgiven us. You have already said it said that you would let it go, that it's that it's it's been cast in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be brought up again. But the question is Will we believe what you said? God, and I just pray that you would give us hearts and minds that are conducive to your word. Give us an attitude to, to appreciate the fact that you didn't have to do this, but you did. You didn't have to wake us this morning, but you did. You didn't have to clothe us in our right mind, but you did. You didn't have to save us, but you did. And we just thank you for blessing us. You don't owe us anything, but by the grace of God, we have come a long way. And we just thank you for what you have done, what you have already established in Scripture. There is nothing new under the heavens. And we just pray, God, as we uh, uh, embark upon this Advent season, that it would be a time for salvation. We need it in our homes. We need it in our country. We need it all over the world for men or, 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 or washing their hands in one another's blood. God, we need you in a special way to save to the uttermost from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. We need you in a special way. Save us, oh God. Save our leaders and save our fathers and our uh, the mothers and the children, God. Save our family members. In the mighty name of Jesus, we need you in a mighty way, oh God, on the streets. We need you in the hospitals. We need you everywhere, everywhere where men are, we are in trouble, God, and we need a Savior. 
We need a Savior to come into our hearts and into our minds and establish a faith in our lives that we might be able to lift up clean hands without wrath and without doubt. God, we thank you for the peace that you've offered to us, but it is only through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, and we pray for every ear that's listening today. We pray, oh God, that you would open up our eyes for our understanding that we might be able to see and appreciate your word for who it is and for what it is. And we thank you for it today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. God bless you, saints. Just know that I love you. I'm praying for you that uh, God will continue to visit you, bless you with understanding, bring light into your heart, bring peace to your mind and to your spirit, not just for you, but for your family. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come to together again, we say God bless you.